from, Mommy. See, a couple of them have the longer hair like the Border Collies. Now, if I can get them, I'm going to be throwing y'all puppies. So, I'm currently here in San Antonio where they're marching for the animals. This is Tom McPhee with the World Animal Awareness Society. This is San Antonio right now. Tracy Bell. I am a trapper, a local trapper in uh, San Antonio, and I have been asked to come out and trap four dogs out at a baseball complex. And they will be going to God's Dogs Rescue um, as soon as we get them trapped. But we gotta locate them first. I've just got pictures, and I know there, it appears there's a small dog, or a couple of small dogs, and for some odd reason, a couple of them have sweaters on. So, odds are they were probably dumped out here, and unfortunately, with the cold weather and everything, and the wet weather, the ones with the sweaters on are now wet. So, it's kind of imperative that we get them today to get them cleaned up, get them warm and everything. Exactly. Putting a sweater on the dog he cannot take off in the rain is not a good thing because it's going to keep their body temperature down. Uh, we're going to look at the pictures, uh, look at any background information. There's like blue poles. Uh, we'll look for that blanket maybe. Look for whatever this is in the background. It looks like it's some kind of playground equipment. Um, a little seesaw thing so we'll just look for that general area and try to find them yeah it looks like there's a couple of small dogs do you have an eye on them yet oh I see them down by the green buildings I don't care about the fortune of fame I just don't want to know my mailman's name 
I prefer to trap them. Um, can I get right there? Yep. And I prefer to trap because that's the safest solution because there's no um, there's no chance they're going to get out uh, in your vehicle, wreak havoc in your vehicle, take a chance of biting you, take a chance of jumping out once you open the door to try to get them out. They're nice, safe, secure. What we'll do is we'll get them in the big trap, run them into a smaller trap, and then transport them to the okay. rescue. They call me sassy when I'm strolling down the street. They call me classy when I'm serving just yeah, a well, bit. I can be deadly free. when I find somebody lovely. And now I'm ready like a kitty in a dress. Don't call me mean, I just want someone to love me. Someone to lick my wounds and kiss my aching body. My desperation knows no termination, baby. Now would you love me if I was somebody else? Wish I had a tail. Wish I had a tail. Cause if I did, then I would swing it, be swinging it.
Big, big. There's a husky mix, and he's like really petite. And then the other girl. I don't know. They're kind of friendly. Um, Barry Wargo was petting them and everything, keeping them there while I was setting up the trap. So well, let's get some eyes on them, and then uh, I may want to give them a shot for the um. Hey, Look how petite he is. Hi, he is so like a miniature husky. <laughs> Yeah, she can't She's a little on the food aggressive side, probably okay. because she's just dominating over him. Okay. And they, these were the ones that were in sweaters, like on the floor? No, there was two littles that were in sweaters. Okay. And they were nowhere to be found. I'm thinking they were probably males okay. coming after her. So um, for space, we need to do um, shots and medical and stuff. So we're going to put them in the van for temporary until we're able to find places to put them, either in the clinic or office. we got to make room. <laughs> right now, this is extra space on campus, right? It is, yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll get some more kennels built in the year to come and uh, have more space. But our intake process is usually... Uh, we have to stick them in the van until we find a, a crate or a kennel for them and learn their personality. And then we'll do medical and stuff like that, get them going. But yeah, we're going to get them set up in here and I'll start their medical process okay. and get them entered into our system. This is this is where the new ones come in. Is this our Ellis Island, actually? <laughs> kind of, sort of, yes. Right? Yeah, unless we have to go somewhere and then we have to empty out the van. So we try to not stock it too full, but it's just a temporary thing. I'm starting school in spring uh, for a veterinary technician, um, but a lot of my experience is just hands-on and being in rescue for years and years. Nine months, maybe? Okay. Maybe older? Let me go drop their um, oh. Oh. You're a good boy. Yeah, he's a baby. He's a baby. Yeah. He, I'm guessing he's an old baby. Yeah, boy. Okay. Let me go grab some medical stuff and go start. Hang on. Somebody already came and picked up the 
No. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. Try to connect with all the dogs that come in here that way? Yes, I do. That's really amazing. To watch him and Chris pull dogs straight out of traps is amazing. They are just so calm and just so, I don't even know the word. Their heartbeats just mixed with the dog's heartbeat or something. I don't know. How'd you find yourself here, Real? Uh, I spent five years incarcerated in Missouri uh, in a few different uh, prison systems. Uh, when I realized I had a shot at a future, I followed my mom to Texas. Um, while I was here, I hit a couple dark spots. I was debating going back to prison. Uh, or something a bit more permanent. And uh, my stepdad got a hold of uh, Miss Debbie Davis, our co-founder, who put me in touch with Miss Julie. Um, I'm an open book as far as a lot of my past, so Miss Julie asked questions, I answered. Uh, we talked about three days, and then she... Uh, she, she asked me when I could start working, uh, and I just told her, I said, when do you need me? She said, be here at 7 a.m. tomorrow.
in that was so scared he was trying to attack us and Chris just sat in there and threw the leash over him and said okay come on buddy and the dog started backing up and kind of growling and he said come on buddy come on buddy and in about 20 minutes after I pulled out of the uh, home base I'm getting videos of the dog just all over Chris licking him and everything and Chris is inside the crate with him it's, it's amazing. It rails the same way. It's just, they're amazing people. So what did we do today? We trapped two dogs. We were going out after four, but we only got two because we only saw the two. And I'll just have um, people out there looking for the other two to see if uh, we can get them trapped and get them out of their little cold, wet sweaters. Army. But I, I've already got another dog that I need to go. Yeah. Well, with the holidays and everybody come and go, and the, the gates get open, the doors get open, the fireworks on uh, New Year's Eve, this is a busy couple of weeks. So. It, will it is, it yeah. will be. And then everybody, there's so many feeders here in San Antonio that have been feeding for months. And now all of a sudden it's going to be urgent because the temperature is dropping. They're doing nothing but feeding, they're not posting the dogs, they're not advertising, trying to get them into rescues and stuff. They're just feeding them. And now the weather's gonna drop to the teens and now it's an emergency. And unfortunately their emergency is not my emergency. Uh, Cause I tell them all the time, post them, get them out there so that people can see them. But well, that's their the glory. You're the best, ah. I love you Tracy. I love you. Six and 37 are the longest stays, and today may be their last day. Uh, that's 37, and the two longest stays are 36 and 37. Today may be when she gets euthanized because we can't find anybody to adopt or foster. Friendly, dog friendly, people friendly. Uh, this dog has probably been here a week and a half maybe two weeks. Um, she's about 21 pounds, friendly, um, dog friendly, people friendly, and about, I'd say a year to two years old. Yes, we do. We walk them twice a week and um, dog test them and pet them and do their vetting when they come in. Across the nation, um, dogs are getting returned or um, they're picking up more strays across the nation. Um, so the rescue groups up north that used to take our, our dogs um, are, have their own to worry about. So everything's kind of backlogged the way we used to do it. Um, so we're looking for um, Texas fosters or adopters, but um, times are tough and they're hard to find. It's very tough. So, Numbers are just not in anybody's favor right no, now, are No, no. And we, we, we scratch all surfaces trying to get, you know, fosters, but um, sometimes just not in time. And I know you go through this a lot. This has got to be where the burnout comes in. Yes, through. yes. And then you see more coming in, and, and you go through the same process, and um, they're not all happy endings. So, But we, we do relish in our happy endings <laughs> yeah. and then and then and then we're going to go do something else the reason why we're here with you today is because of why we have a dog that came in on monday which is three days ago with um we don't think he has an eye 
but we're going to get it assessed. So it looks pretty bad. It's either um, hurt or he doesn't have an eye. So he's had some trauma in his life. Yes. You've been out already, buddy. He's been out already. You're such a good boy. Hi. Such a good boy. See if you load up. Let's load. Ready to load? Let's load. Load up. Load up. Oh, I think you have been in a car before. Let's try it. I'm going to leave that on you because you're strong. Um, this office visit is to see what we can do to help this dog with this eye. Um, that looks like it's been injured, but it may be... Um, an injury he's had for a while. Um, we are just here to assess his eye to see if, um, to let the rescue know uh, what's going on so that if a rescue wants to pull, they'll know kind of the monetary amount, what it's gonna take to fix, fix him or make him comfortable. Yeah. And again, probably the thing is you only got a very, and we've only got a short, short period of, of time, time um, before he'll be on the youth list. And, um, oh yes, they're very sweet. Um, and the cost for medical care sometimes is one of the, the factors, of course. Um, so we just have to find, find the right rescue for the dog. Well, I know Dr. Bubba was trying to communicate to us that um, you know maybe we can use the idea of telling stories about the dogs to help raise money for their care. That's right. Hi, buddy. Come on, let's now go. We're gonna visit today. There's all kinds of pretty puppies here. Let's go check your meat. <laughs> come on, Angel. Let's go see what you're doing. I'm coming with you. I'm coming. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Let's go. Up, up. I know, she just cleaned it, so there's not too many smells. I know you still got it. Sixty-seven point six, And then he's bubbles are in there. Okay. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. Come on. All right, let's look at your good eye first. So why don't you tell me your name and who you got helping with you? Oh, my name is Bubba Cundy, and this is... Crystal Gillette. Good boy. We're looking at Mr. Sampson here. What? Come on, bud. No, I know I've kissed his two hands. Wiggles, hold still. I guess your new name is Wiggles. <laughs> Wiggle one eye? Alright. Yeah, so. Good job, buddy. Good job. Let me get a little dead nerd see if we can. Uh, it's a cherry. <laughs> Necessity's mother of mission, yeah. so. And it looks different than when I was in here last. More <laughs> clutter now. Nah. Okay. All right. So, you want to you wanna grab a uh, little cotton swab there? We'll see if we can pull this little gland out of the way here so we can take a better look. You cannot eat them. They're not food. Oh, is that cold? There you go. Is that cold? Dead a little dead nerd on there, too. Hi, baby. I'm gonna hold his eye open if you can just pull that third eye with it. Go in that naked hands out the way right there. Just push that down towards you. There you go. Now. Uh, yeah, so it looks like he probably had a puncture to the eye that actually caused the vitreous and all the fluid of the eye to expel and then it just collapsed and healed on itself okay. because you've got all the conjunctival tissue kind of collapsed in like a sinkhole and then that's why you see the cherry eye or the third eyelid gland uh -huh. floating to the surface because it can't be anatomically in its normal position anymore so um, some dogs are born with these things looking at him since he has all normal anatomy around it my suspicion is that he probably got some type of trauma to it, puncture, laceration, you name it, that caused the uh, eye to rupture, vitreous to drain out. Cornea is healed over. You can still see a little edema in there, but the eye is going to be really non-salvageable. Right. You can see to the specialist, you know, they can check retinal um, 
integrity or anything like that, but the eye's done what it's going to do. The good thing is, is even though it's um, collapsed like that, it's draining actually. The tears are still going out the nasal lacrimal duct and not draining out the outside. You know, you see the little dogs where they get the old runny, dirty eyes and they call it before. And uh, it's functionally fine. I don't see any infection in it. Everything looks good. So, so it's like a functional plug. Yeah. yeah, basically Mother Nature has killed itself and anatomically everything still functioning the way it should, just lack of the eye. So the recommendation is usually to go in there and remove the eye itself, but if it's not causing any problems, let sleeping dogs lie. I do want to try, if he'll hold still, I do want to try to check his pressures in the left eye yeah. to make sure it wasn't secondary to a glaucoma or something like okay. that that could have been contributory or non-controlled and got refractory. And that's something to worry about too. Anytime that eye collapses on itself, my assumption is looking at it, you know, he's not producing the vitreous humor anymore, otherwise this thing would be standing back up. Right. But if this is something fresh -er than what it looked, there's a chance that this eye could start filling back up and that architecture is abnormal up front. It doesn't have the little drainage pattern. It's got like a little drain up front the call trabeculae where the fluid drains out. That can cause a secondary glaucoma and the eye could fill back up and build pressures, then it does need to be removed at that point. But if it stays like it is now, he took care of his own. He's missing a canine. And some, yeah, he's yeah, missing a canine. On the other side, <laughs> opposite side. Yeah. Um, they could talk. So if somebody adopted this dog or a rescue took him, they could adopt him out just like this? Yes. Or do they ever sell it to that? No, you have to take all the internals out, otherwise there's still being secretory in there. Gotcha. So that's the thing is, you know, he could be prone to conjunctivitis and infection because there is a cafeteria area in there. So foreign material, debris could get in there and it could cause that type of uh, infection. So if he does play somewhere, you know, I would say one, just monitor it. If it's okay. happy, let sleeping dogs lie. Two, if it seems to get kind of a little discharge from time to time, just using a natural tear replacement or something to try to flush and irrigate, just nothing medicated. And if it says take the red out, stay away from it because that means it's got a vasoconstrictor or something that's going to dry things up. And right. then it would, be con you know, would continue to be problematic. Then the best thing for long term would be to have the eye removed with the nucleation. So if I'm a used car salesman, though, how would I put that? Because that doesn't sound too good, too great if I'm looking to adopt this dog. It's like, oh, fun, great, perfect. Yeah. So give me the used car version of this. Well, like I said, right now everything looks pretty uh, pretty happy on this. There's a lot of dogs around with one eye that they've had previous trauma. trauma. They weren't addressed or you know treated initially, and the eye, body, and stuff heals itself into the most, I guess, um, natural form that's not problematic for the animal and the good thing too is he's not causing any self-mutilation you know a lot of times they'll be rubbing at it they'll be traumatizing itself that's another reason to have roots so right now it looks like it's going to be pretty easy maintenance it's just that we don't know is this something that's been there for a year and a half two years or is this something that happened in the past two to three weeks right so what you're saying is this used dog actually won't cost him a whole lot more it's actually going to cost him less because he knows how to like self-heal and take care of himself i think it's going to i think it's going to cost him more peanut butter as happy as he is <laughs> want to lick and play isn't that right huh <laughs> Make a name for you too peanut butter all right Got a treat yet. 22 and 24. All right, we're good, bud. Very good. So I think right now you can let sleeping dogs lie on that. All right. I missed my photo opportunity. I'm going to take one. Here, come here. Come see it. Come here. Come I was see. listening. I should have. Sit. 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 Hey, buddy. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. He's a good boy. Good boy. Okay. I don't have it. Look, I know your nose works. Just a little movement, but we got it. Yes, yeah, so it's this bottom left. I know you don't like it. People to look at your teeth. And then upper incisors. Kind of the middle ones are missing. Oh, yeah. You look at you and your kin on sometimes, didn't you? Is the tooth completely gone? Or is there still a piece of okay? That's a good margin flush. Same thing on the insiders. Maybe it's in somebody's tire like your dog. <laughs> That's true. Let's <laughs> just go here real quick. No, sit. 
Yeah, it's like, right? Was that just the dog at one point in time having too much fun, or was it something that was... You know, usually that's uh, them being kennel too long or, you know, pinned in somewhere and they're trying to get out, so they're going to use the front teeth for the apprehension and grabbing, and then they'll be chewing at, you know, maybe a wire kennel or something like that, trying to get out, and they'll just rope those teeth like that and crack them out. Yeah. So you just like to love with your mouth a little. <laughs> They're going to have to be careful. Head so, Dr. Bubba, being the, uh, you know, in essence, the family doctor for everybody's pets here in, in, in the Marion area, you're, you're just not a doctor. You're kind of like got to be an eye doctor, a doctor, a dentist. It's like proctologist, right? right? Jack of all trades, master of none. And that's exactly right. And you got to be species specific too, you know, because you know one product no, you can use in one species and not safe for the other. The anatomy is different. The uh, kidneys are different. Hearts are different. You know, everything varies from species to species. Pine gut fermenter versus a uh, monogastric. So you, know, you got to know a lot on the tree. Oh boy. So, so no glaucoma. No glaucoma. Perfect pressure okay. on there. So perfect. Here we go. Good, good boy. I love it. You want it on the front seat? Sure. You ready to go back? I know you don't like this. We've just started uh, a new survey. And this is what we're finding in the street. visit. Are you coming to visit?
reason I'm in San Antonio is, you know, one of the principal reasons I'm in San Antonio is because more than 20,000 dead dogs are pulled off the street every year by sanit sanitation services. This is a known statistic. Years ago, it was nearly 40,000 dogs. So there's lots of dogs here in San Antonio. It's a San, you know, San Antonio is a very um, dog community, lots of dogs. But this is the reason the dogs are out and loose that so many of them are killed in the street. He's a good looking fellow. You're a good looking boy. Girl, sorry. <laughs> You're a good looking girl. This guy's looking for a meal. He's absolutely looking for a meal. So we're fairly close to uh, downtown and there, there are dogs everywhere here in San Antonio. I go over to this house where I know there's puppies and then the guy, you know, I'm asking permission to enter his property and make sure I'm not stealing his dogs. And that's when he says, oh yeah, there's one tangled up under the house. And I hear this, ah! and I was like, oh my God, you mean right now? And it, um, it's like that plastic um, cover under insulation under mobile homes. Well, this is like all falling down and how it has the threads weaved. That's when it was all tangled up. And I crawled in under there and just as I cut the last line, she was coming in so um so I was in the nick of you know nick she's of real time. sweet now and, and licking hands and eating but when it comes to babies right um they're not so nice to see maybe if Under mama the house. would go in and get them out ah uh, okay see they're picking on that the little dog hey 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 i think he got himself behind the fence the other little black one, they're picking on him. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I can't see him. Past that, like, driftwood board, there's a big clump hanging down, and he had it, he was strangled. He could barely scream, um, and it's that kind of fishing twine stuff that they put in that, um, like, the tarping, and he had it wrapped around his leg, around his neck. This was just last night. Just last oh, night. Now, if I can get them, I'm going to be throwing y'all puppies. Okay. I don't know where we'll stuff them just yet, but... Come on, Mom. Come on. Come on, bring them out. <gasps> oh, my oh, goodness. Look at those babies. Bring them out. <gasps> oh, my goodness, y'all. Who's the daddy? 
I thought it was uh, Big Boy. Droopy. It's okay. Not work. <laughs> You guys are so cute. your babies. Puppy, bring your trap, the extra trap over, and we'll just put the puppies in that trap. She bought the trap just to hold them. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, we don't want that. None of that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so rude. Why well, better, but Tom yeah. was not around, wouldn't it? Come here, Mom. It's okay. Oh, come on. No, come back out this way. I think I can run right over to my room. Come on, guys. Here, Mom. Oh, come on, Mom. Awesome. This is the one that was caught yesterday. 
I think we have to. Okay. Anybody wanna throw them in the crate? Bye. Two, two more. Come here, Mom. She's coming back. Come on. Hey, there's a bite of barbecue left. Come on, <laughs> sweetie girl. Come on. Okay, you ready for me to hand them out? Yes. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think it was completely warranted. Yeah, like, oh, where's she at? <laughs> Just keep your face away. Yeah. Sorry, Mama. It's okay, baby. Yeah, so that didn't work. No, they got a little blanket, but I'd rather leave two together and get those later okay. than leave a single puppy. Because she's not, um, I mean, she's pretty much weaned them, so they'd be on their own. Right. So I don't want to leave a, a lone pup. And I think Queen's both traps are used, but I think in another day or two, or even, um, well, I'm going to have both of them now. I am bringing the trap back down this weekend. And with good food, the puppies will come into the trap. Yeah, no. So I have one kennel available, so they'll go in my last, my last run in the shelter. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's been a very productive day, hasn't it? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. It's yeah. the start to the year, but you know. Uh, okay. Almost. Like it. Okay. Now I've got a good enough grip. Definitely feeling loving, um, devoted Bye, animals. Mama. Hi, sweetie. We'll come back for you and get you spayed. <laughs> oh, this one's going to be so pretty with the long hair. Oh. Now, what, what mix do you think? We know mom, but what do you think and dad what is? What is mom? Well, right. I don't uh, know. You know, I kind of thought dad was groupy here. Oh. But I don't know. If, well, they're old enough. But, um... I don't really know. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's All go right. take a family portrait. Okay. Look at those babies. I am just amazed. None of them are shy. Um, they're all very, very friendly puppies. I mean, I really expected them to be shy. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while.